Hurricane Fiona may have claimed as many as 16 lives in Puerto Rico. And this morning, more than a million people remained without power over a week after the storm struck. Mayor Eric Adams and a delegation from New York got a first-hand look at the damage on Sunday. Where I am standing right now, uh, this was uh, 10, 12 feet of water. It may seem like it dried out now, but the results of it is that people have lost everything that they own. Even the house that I'm standing in front of had to be rescued by boat. And when you think about this, you know that this is a long-term approach to this. This is not one and done. So this morning, Mayor Adams and the New York delegation is on the ground in the Dominican Republic to survey the damage there. So joining us this morning is City Councilman Rafael Salamanca of the Bronx. Good morning, Councilman. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So tell us a little bit about yesterday. You spent all day touring the damage left behind by Hurricane Fiona in Puerto Rico. So what did you see? I mean, what, what's the cleanup been like? Have they made any progress at all? Well, you know, they, they, uh, there has been some progress. Uh, yesterday, we started our day off with meeting with the uh, governor of Puerto Rico and some members of the uh, congressional delegation. Uh, and then we went down and visited the uh, mayor at San Juan, Puerto Rico. Um, you know, and San Juan is one of the municipalities uh, that has had uh, electricity restored to about 60% of their population. Um, but there's another 40% that has not had electricity, and as a result, uh, they do not have any water. Mm. Uh, after our meeting with the San Juan uh, mayor, we went down to Cabo Rojo uh, with uh, Mayor Eric Adams, where the situation there is in dire need. 90% of the southwest uh, part of, of the island uh, has no electricity and no water. And as you can see with some of the images, uh, the, what the winds and the waters, the damages that it created, uh, to uh, to these municipalities, um, you know I, what we saw is power lines down. Uh, we saw some um, some of the homes, some houses were completely destroyed. Uh, you know their roof and their their walls were gone. But yet you saw their kitchens and their refrigerators and their clothing, uh, which was extremely heartbreaking uh, uh, to, uh, to us. Mm. Well, you were able to speak to some of the residents. I mean, what are they telling you their their biggest needs are right now? Well, you know, I, I can say, speaking with the, uh, with the, uh, the, the mayors, one of the biggest needs is restoring uh, electricity, restoring power. Uh, if you have no power as a result, then they, they don't have access to water. They need the water pumps to, that are going to power by, by electricity to flow uh, correctly. Uh, we also need to restore power. I visited, I visited a handful of individuals who are homebound, uh, who depend on insulin. Uh, and, and so they need they need their insulin to stay refrigerated. Uh, there's other individuals who have have other health disparities such as asthma. Mm -hmm. um, some uh, and, and so they need electricity so that their oxygen equipment uh, can can operate. And so what we're doing in conjunction with with OEM, uh, we're working. This this trip was an assessment trip to come yeah. down and visualize and see what our eyes was exactly happening. And, and the administration in OEM is working on providing. Uh, generators uh, to, to these affected towns so that we can bring back the power grids uh, yep. until Luma, their operator, restores power. Yeah, there is so much desperation. Speaking of power, Puerto Rican re Rico residents are, are harshly criticizing that company, right? I mean, they took over after Hurricane Maria. Are they being held accountable? That's one of the biggest frustrations that I hear in talking to the residents here down in Puerto Rico. You know, after Maria, this new uh, private company was handed this contract, and we feel that maybe they're over their heads. Uh, they were supposed to restore all and, and all the uh, uh, the wooden poles where the electrical uh, uh, power is is transferred over. They really have not complied with that in certain parts of, of, of Puerto Rico. And so, you know, I know that the, con the congressional delegation was down here, Congressman Richie Torres and Adriano Espaillat, um, and they're, you know, they're in, in FEMA, and they're really holding uh, Luma to, to, uh, to the fire on addressing these issues. But until then, New York City, New Yorkers are here to help. You know, I represent the South Bronx, uh, where um, I have the biggest Puerto Rican population in the city of New York. And so this is personal to me. It's personal to my community. And so I can tell you that the city of New York is doing everything they can to send the resources and the manpower so that we can restore power and bring them their water that they need and the resources that they need. 
Yeah, speaking of personal, I know that your, your parents were born in Puerto Rico. Uh, I remember after Maria, it, getting the hospitals up and running was, was, I mean, that was the paramount concern. Mm -hmm. What are the hospitals looking like across the island right now? Are they operational? Uh, at the moment, um, we have not heard of, of, of the hospitals um, losing power, um, at, at least in the south of, of, uh, of, of the island. Uh, but I do know that um, I, in, in talking to, to, to in talking to the, um, the mayors and talking to the to the to the mayor's team uh, from the city of New York, they have sent a team uh, of OEM of Office of Emergency Management, uh, where they have down there they send inspectors for transportation, they send inspectors for uh, building inspectors, they also send Parks Forestry uh, to cut down uh, trees that may be blocked in roads, and I know that there's all they also send some personnel from the Department of Health. Uh, to assess the situation now. Well, it is just, like you said, so heartbreaking to see what's going on down there, but we appreciate what you are doing to bring them help. Councilman Salamanca, thank you again for being with us this morning. Thank you for having me.